Hi, this is Mr. Ryan Chang. Welcome back to my video channel. You know, we are quickly approaching the year 476. Say what? It's 2023. What's up with 476? In AD 476, an improbable event happened, which no one saw coming except St. Augustine, arguably the greatest church father who died in AD 430. So what happened that year? After nearly 500 years of existence, the once mighty and invincible Western Roman Empire came to an end in the year 476. It was no more after that. Augustine of Hippo wouldn't have been surprised because he witnessed several telltale signs pointing to the demise of Rome long before it flamed out in 476. Likewise, while the mighty American Empire, in existence for nearly 250 years, will one day end up like the Roman Empire, several telltale signs in recent time may indicate that the end, that is, America's 476, may come much sooner than later. And this observation has nothing to do with whether we might be living in the end time. Biblically speaking, we have been living in the last days ever since the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. Read Book of Acts chapter 2 verse 17. Actually, what we are waiting for is the day of the Lord that will lead to a catastrophic end. But the day of the Lord too has nothing to do with my observation that the American Empire will one day end, perhaps a lot sooner than later. This observation comes from the prophet Daniel's interpretation of a dream his boss, the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar, had in the 6th century BC. In that dream, recorded in Daniel 2, Nebuchadnezzar saw a huge statue with four distinctive parts that represented four world empires, three in the future. The head of gold represents his Babylonian empire from 626 to 539 BC. But that once mighty empire was conquered by the Federation of Middle Persian Empire, which is represented by the chest of silver. Later, that empire was defeated by the Gracian Empire, represented by the belly and thighs of bronze, which peaked under Alexander the Great. But he died at the age of 32, after which his vast empire was ripped apart into four smaller pieces shared by his competing generals. The last part, the legs of iron, pointed to the rise of the Roman Empire. And St. Augustine, living in that very empire in the early part of 5th century AD, saw many similarities between the Roman and Babylonian Empire. He writes, quote, The city of Rome was founded like another Babylon, and as it were the daughter of the former Babylon that conquered the whole world and subdued it far and wide, end of a quote. And Augustine, mindful of what eventually happened to the mighty Babylon Empire, could sense that the once indomitable Roman Empire was nearing its end, suffering therefore the same fate of the Babylon Empire that ceased to exist after being defeated by the Middle Persian Empire 1,000 years earlier. Augustine just couldn't ignore several telltale signs that pointed to the demise of Rome long before it flamed out in 476. Now, before I talk about that, I want to pivot to the 1980s as a way to point out one telltale sign indicating that America's end may come much sooner than later. In 1984, I graduated from Biola University in Southern California. The commencement speaker that evening was the late Dr. E.V. Hill, who was at that time the senior pastor of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Los Angeles. This nationally recognized pastor gave a powerful sermon based on Psalm 11.3. Listen. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? What was concerning Hill that day? He was concerned about homosexuality, fatherlessness, and churches that failed to preach the gospel. That was nearly 40 years ago. This is 2023. Now there's one issue that we were not debating in 1984. Can boys become women and mommies? 
can girls become men and daddies? Now, these lines are part of a song Fred Rogers sang to children on his popular Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood aired on PBS for over 30 years. He's such a beloved figure that Hollywood even made a movie about him starring Tom Hanks. In 1980, Fred Rogers was a guest on Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. For those of you who do not know about the show, maybe you have heard of Jay Leno. Leno was successor to Johnny Carson. Jimmy Fallon is now the host of the show. Now listen to what Mr. Rogers said on the show in 1980. Boys are boys from the beginning. Girls are girls right from the start. Because sometimes children think that they might change. They might have to change after a while. How did the audience respond to Roger's statement? They laugh. Listen. And you know, we laugh about that now. We don't laugh about that today. In 2023, Mr. Rogers will be canceled for singing this. Only girls can be the mummies. Only boys can grow up and be the daddies. Yes, sir. An extreme conclusion, you say? But Augustine probably would agree with me because what's going on in America today is similar to what was going on in the Western Roman Empire before it collapsed in 476. So what exactly happened in AD 476? What war brought down the mighty Roman Empire? Actually, there was no war that year in 476. The war that greatly weakened Rome had happened long before that in AD 410 when barbarians called Visigoths sacked Rome, which according to historians, quote, was the first time in 800 years that Rome had been taken by outsiders, end of quote. There was another invasion of Rome in AD 455, this time by the Vandals. So how did these invasions of Rome affect the psyche of Romans? A historian writes, quote, The fall of Rome for centuries symbol and center of Western civilization was a profound shock for all who lived in her protective shadow, end of a quote. This to say, the Romans no longer felt invincible and invulnerable. But to Augustine, invasions from outside were not the main reason why the Roman Empire fell. Long before that, Rome was decaying from within, having become, as Augustine put it, quote, a nation corrupted by avarice and luxury caused by prosperity, end of a quote. Augustine also noted how Romans had fallen head over heels in mindless entertainment from Greece that, quote, sapped the Roman manliness and persuaded them to yield to the enervating and emasculating influence of foreign licentiousness, end of a quote. So what really happened in 476? The barbarian king named Ottovacar deposed Western Roman Emperor Romulus, thereby effectively ending the reign of Augustus that began in 27 BC. A weakened Rome from within offered no resistance. That, to historians, marked the end of the Western Roman Empire. So when I say AD 476 is nearing America, I'm saying that the process that will result in the collapse of the American Empire has long begun. America is going the way of all the previous great empires that in time collapsed by the weight of their own corruption, licentiousness, and immorality from within. A nation that tells boys that they become women and mommies and tell girls that they can become men and daddies is a nation gone crazy, only a few steps away from reaching the year 476, when America will meet the same fate that fell upon all other great empires and kingdoms that preceded her, except for one. There is one exception. Which empire is that? Return to Augustine, the sack of Rome in AD 410, which shocked everyone, prompted this church father to work on a monumental book consisting of 1,100 pages called The City of God. It took 13 years for him to complete this project. In it, he compares two cities. On the one hand, there is the City of God that Hebrew 11.10 refers to as, quote, the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God, end of quote. The city, says Augustine, quote, glorifies in the Lord, end of a quote. On the other hand, there is the city of man, the great and seemingly invincible empires men have produced throughout the years 
that says Augustine, quote, glorified in itself, end of a quote. So then, which city will be the eternal city? A city that will endure forever. The city of man, that is Rome, which was known as the eternal city at the time, or the city of God? The answer is found at the end of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Daniel 2.34 reads, quote, A rock was cut out, but not by human hands. He struck the statue on his feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Verse 35, Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold, referring to the city of man, were broken to pieces at the same time and became like chef on a threshing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace. But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. End of quote. This huge mountain made of a rock cut out not by human hand referred to the city of God. The city of man doesn't and cannot last forever. Every city or kingdom of man comes with an expiration date. But what about the city of God? To that question, Daniel 2.44 declares, quote, The God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end. But it will itself endure forever. End of a quote. The city of God, that is God's kingdom, lasts forever. And we put our ultimate faith and trust in that eternal city. But the reality is that, as Augustine writes, quote, these two cities, city of God and city of man, are entangled together in this world and intermix until the last judgment effect their separation, end of a quote. So then, how shall we live? That is to ask, borrowing the words of E.V. Hill, What can the righteous do if the foundations are destroyed? Let me show you the words of the Christian statesman, the late Chuck Colson, who at one time was a special counsel to President Nixon. He writes, quote, In describing the two cities, Augustine reiterated Jesus' teaching that while Christians live in the city of man, they do not belong to the city of man. Their presence in the earthly city is like of strangers sojourning in a foreign country. While this sounds like a recipe for withdrawal, it is anything but that. Augustine taught that we must assume the obligations of citizenship that is both earthly and heavenly out of obedience to God and love of neighbor. End of a quote. What does that look like? In the movie Titanic, as a liner is slowly sinking into the North Atlantic Ocean, a chaos develops with fearful and confused passengers trying to get into a lifeboat. But we see two sets of people who are doing that. In fact, they are staying put in the doomed ship performing their job, being responsible to the very end. On the one hand, we see the ship's crew working frantically to get the passengers into lifeboat. On the other hand, we see a group of musicians hired to play their instrument for the enjoyment of the ship's passengers doing just that, presumably until they sunk with the boat. Their final song was a hymn, no less. Near to thee, near to Jesus. I rather think that the ship's crew and musicians show how we, as citizens and ambassadors of God's kingdom, should live in the city of man that is always sinking. First, we live to save others from the oncoming doom by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with them so that they can also be part of the eternal city of God. There is no other remedy. Second, we live to make, figuratively speaking, beautiful music so that God's presence is palpable amid confusion and chaos, including those who genuinely struggle with transsexual tension. This could be, on the one hand, speaking the truth in love, and on the other hand, gentle encouragement, helping hand, or simply offering a listening ear. Perhaps those dwellers of the city of man, without hope and full of fear, who are touched by the beautiful music created by the dwellers of the city of God will want to come near to Christ. Amen.